Hello, welcome back to another Apache NiFi video. This is Steven here. And today I'm starting a new NiFi data flow using the Best Buy API as our data source. And before we get started, just wanted to thank everyone for subscribing to the channel, following along. And if you haven't had a chance yet, feel free to go ahead and do that too, so that you can be kept informed when new videos come out. Now, one other thing to cover is the GitHub location so that you can go ahead and when I get done with every video, I will be putting inside the repository for Apache DiFi, I will put the templates in here and I'll try to make sure that I keep every video gets its own template. That way you'll have that part of the video that's done. So it won't be further along or behind any part. It'll actually be this video, this template. All right, so let's go ahead and get started now. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here for the Best Buy APIs. I'm gonna switch over to Notepad QQ and we're gonna take a look at what we have. So there's two APIs that we're gonna be utilizing, but first we're gonna be starting with the uh, Categories API. There's also one called Products API too. So that's this one that we're seeing a result from. And let's go to the next one. So this is one we're gonna start with. This is our Categories API from Best Buy. And this is a response that came back from it. So in this response, uh, basically what I'm requesting is they have uh, every product falls into a category and subcategory, or not always a subcategory, but normally th they always have a category from what I've seen when looking at the data. Now, <clears throat> when you make a request, you have to populate some information inside of that HTTP request from the API. And here's some things you do have to provide besides the endpoint for the base URL, there's a show section, which is requesting very specifically which, which uh, fields we would like to get back. So in this case, there's ID and name, which of these are for the categories. And then there's subcategory ID and subcategory name. So we want those two. Now, what I wanna do is get all four of those categories back so that I can split them and then insert them into a table and have that information for use later on. Okay, so first thing we, we also need to look at is what did this result do for us? So it's requesting, this request was for all categories and subcategories or all categories. And then inside of them, we see nested inside of a, another array. So we have array of categories here. And then below that, so here's our first category, which is gift ideas. And then inside of gift ideas, there's a subcategory array as well. And we can see there's very there's a lot of them in there. So we want to split all these out and basically have a, one record, one row for each one of those. And then we get to the next category, which in this case is TV and home theater, and the subcategories inside of that as well. Okay, so let's go back to the top and see what the result is doing for us. We can see that this result, API result, is uh, telling us we are getting records basically one to 100, and our current page is number one. There's a total of 4,447 categories, or results in this case, and then there's a total page, total page of 45. So we need to be able to handle, well, how do we get those other pages? Not just the first one and we're done. Obviously, we're not gonna get everything. So we wanna take care of that and basically, the way we're gonna go about that is creating a simple little loop with some processors inside of NiFi to get us to that result uh, for so that we can make sure we get all 45 or if the page count changed on us, it was a different number, how do we dynamically make sure that we that NiFi knows how to get those pages? So let's go ahead and build that first. All right, so let's jump back over to NiFi and get started on this. Okay, so back in NiFi, uh, the very first thing we want to do is make sure we can use the API. So we want a invoke HTTP. And then for this, we know when we go inside of it, we have to set up the remote URL for the API request. 
And I'm going to go grab an example of that. I have it. Here it is. So we can make sure that it at least works. And then we'll make some changes to this URL. So here's the URL. It's the same one I used to request the example we just looked at for that result set. So we see here we have the base URL, which is right here in that categories. And then we have to provide a format. We can either get it back in JSON or uh, XML. The API key. And then the page size of 100, which is the max amount we can get back per page. And then there's a show section here as well, which we're saying gives the ID name, category ID, and category name. Now we do have to provide the API key in here as well. And that is, so let me fetch that row fast. Uh, yeah, I have that. And with the API key, we'll be able to go in there then and send our first request off. So that goes right here. And there we go. So we need to put it into something. So I know that I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to, after I get this back, uh, my first step basically after looking at the results is to put it into a, evaluate JSON path processor so I can get the category names out there. And then actually that's not going to be that we're still, we need to work on our loop. So this will, this will be what we're going to send it into. Let's just test it out though. We want to make sure the URL works. Uh, we have to handle for everything we're not working with right now. There we go. And I don't want to request a ton of these. So let's say one per minute for the run schedule. Let's go ahead and start it, stop. And we should get a result back if we did everything correct. And we can take a look at this and see that we do have everything working correctly here. So there's our result set, right? Okay, so that works. Now there's a couple of changes I want to make to this though. Uh, one is I want to use parameters inside of this URL. So I want to make it smaller and compact it a little bit. Uh, so we need to add a parameter context. And let's go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna create a new one. There's my test one for making sure everything was working correctly earlier. So this one is gonna be best buy RAM. We're gonna add our first one in here, which is the API key. So there's a couple of primers I know I'm, I'm already gonna use. Uh, oops, my bad. Okay, so one of them is gonna be API key. So I'm gonna have that in there. And normally I'd want to make it sensitive value, but because we can't put a sensitive parameter inside of a non-sensitive field for a processor, we can't do that here. So we're not going to, we're just going to apply it in there. Uh, but that's not actually the way I want to set it up uh, for the value. A value here is I want to make it so that it includes part or yeah, part of the, uh, information. So API key, that's what I want that value to be. I want to put more of it in there. Our next one is going to be base URL category. So this is the base URL for the endpoint of the API. So I want to include that in here as well, which is the, let me grab that copy of that. And then that value goes in here. And then from here, I know the name is just going to be base URL categories. Uh, I'm going to add the products one in here. So I don't have to come back here and do it later. So I'll go ahead and just make that one right now. 
and I have a copy of it. There it is. And I want to put the question mark on the end. So both those should be set up correctly now. Didn't the one there? There we go. So that one's set up correctly too. All right. So those are our two endpoints. I also know I have page size, so I might as well just get that done. And the value for this is page size equals 100. And the next one is format. And format equals JSON. Those are the ones I think I need. And I think we're done with the parameter. Now we can go ahead and build the URL. And the way I want to build this URL is going to be, uh, I've already created my example. And let me put it in here as a label as well. So we know what we're using. We can see it for right now at least. So that's what we're going to add. So we have the parameter for base URL and then the parameter for format and then the and API key and page size, page size and show the fields that we want to get in our result. Now let's go ahead and get those in there. All right, and you know it's working correctly and everything because you see it's in red and just a reminder, if I was to hit hashtag curly bracket, I could do control space. Oh, <laughs> I cannot. Before we do this, we created the parameter, but we did not apply it to the workflow. So under go to the cog wheel here on operate, make sure you're Picking the entire process group. Go ahead and go to that config. And then from here, process group parameter number complex is gonna be our best by param. Apply that, now we're good to go. So now this will work correctly. And go back in here. And if we take a look here, so there you go. It's already updated syntax highlighting. But just a reminder, just curly bracket, and then you can hit control space bar and see a list of all the parameters you've created and what you can add. And then you just put it in there and close it. All right, so back to this now. So we're looking at what we have and everything looks good there. I don't see anything that's standing out as being incorrect. I'll go ahead and save that, apply it. Go ahead and remove that one in the queue. Test it out, make sure it works correctly. There we go, we have a result back. All right, so we've just created that. We set up our HTTP request now for the API, and this is the information we're getting back from it. Now, let's go ahead and think about this loop that we wanna create here. So we already know from looking at the, the uh, response that we got back, and let me grab a copy of that just so we have a reference here. So this is a, the first part of the response we got back, right? And what we requested from it. And this is what it looks like. So we know when we do this, this one's gonna say it's uh, from one to 100, it's current page is one. Okay, but we wanna get all 45 pages. So what I'm thinking we wanna do now is evaluate the JSON path on current page and then the total pages too, right? That way we know this is what page we're on. This is how many, this is our goal to get to, which is 45. All right, so let's go ahead and clean this up now. We're done with that. And go ahead and add the, configure the evaluate JSON, which is going to be the total, no, I said current page, right? So we're gonna add that one in here, call it current page. There's the JSON path to it. And then we need to do the total page as well, total pages. We'll add that one in here. And now we have both. 
So what this will do is evaluate that, add them both as a attribute, make sure we configure that correctly, and they'll get attached to the flow file now as it comes through, which is what we wanna see. So from here, the next step I want to do in creating my loop is gonna be we evaluate it. Now I want to route on this one, and it's gonna be a route on attribute. And I'm gonna feed that one into here on the matches. We'll go ahead and terminate those other relationships. Bring that one in here. And there we go. So now we have the route. So from here, we're gonna have two directions for our route. We're gonna send stuff down for the flow files that we have, and then we're gonna route back around. And I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. We don't need this anymore. I think we're good. And we're gonna route these back over and then back into evaluate or back into the invoke HTTP process to re-query for the next page. Okay, so we're 15 minutes in, let's go ahead and call it here. And uh, when we come back, we'll go ahead and try to finish up this loop part so that we can make sure we're getting all the results that we want from this API. Catch you in the next one, bye.